The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamond Titus, and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Altiorum has gone deep, deep, deep into researching and understanding ethical investing, has worked within a financial advice practice, and before all of that, would you believe, was a head chef in restaurants in Sydney and Adelaide and Alice Springs, clearly multi-talented. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Alexandra Brown. Woo! Thank Welcome. you so much for having me, Peter. <laughs> Not at all. I feel like there's a whole another conversation we need to have about food at some point because I didn't know <laughs> before I did this research that you had such chefy capabilities. I'm a bit excited about that. <laughs> I do. I do put on a, a mean dinner party. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm right there with. In fact, just a few days ago, had one on the weekend. So I'm right there with you. Um, but let's sort of start with getting to know you a bit better through your tech. Um, and I'm very, you know, I really do want to get to Altiorum, but I want to understand you a little bit better through your technology. Talk to me about emojis. Do you use emojis? What's your most used emoji? I use emojis a lot. I love okay. emojis. A great way to convey emotion and feeling. And the my most used emoji is the green love heart. And that is, it's just me. I'm always loving on things that are to do with nature or the environment. And a lot of my friends and colleagues are also into sustainability. So it's often used as a very enthusiastic yes. I That is so on brand. <laughs> so well done for being so consistent with all of the messaging. I love it. That's hysterical. So now we all live with our smartphones all the time. I'm, I'm starting to get a bit of a trigger to when my, my phone vibrates. But if you had to wipe everything off your phone and just keep three apps on the phone, which ones would you keep? Uh, the first one would definitely be email apps because, you know, I, I do run a business after all. Mm-hmm. So, you know, great way to communicate with teams and peers and network and obviously all the newsletters in advice and sustainability and finance, just keeping right. me up to date with what's going on. Uh, Audible or a podcast app, definitely, because... I'm constantly listening to podcasts on sustainable finance, um, but more so on business as well and marketing Mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship. And, you know, I'll often be preparing dinner, tidying the house, listening to (laughs) a business mentor at the same time. So, so good. And the third one would definitely be the camera app because, you know, cameras are just so great these days. I've got a big fancy one, which I use, you know, used to take on hiking trips and things like that. But now I've got just a great camera in my pocket. So always whipping it out. It's so true. It's, well, I mean, actually for my husband, both my husband and I turned 50 this year and, you know, you get some little lovely gift. And so for his, it was a really good camera. And then we've realized since it, because they're a bit of a pain in the neck too. Like if you're going and doing something fun, then to have this lug around this heavy camera when you can just put your phone in your pocket. And like you say, the quality has got so good. So good. Exactly. You know, see a sunset, snap it. You know, it's just, it's so easy. 
particularly if you're not turning it into a large version of that image, you know, if you don't need something that's really that great raw data. I think that's really what it, what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, most it's, of us look at these things those, small. Uh, oh, sorry, it's to go into the photo books, you know, that I imagine right. that I'm going to create with all the photos. That <laughs> exactly, one day. One day. One day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm completely with you. All right. Well, so let's dive into Altiorum and let's start just at that high level where you know, where does it sit in the tech space? You know, what category does it generally fall under and what other tools do you sort of either sit next to or even get compared to? Sure. I'll, so I guess I'll first explain what Altiorum is because it's mm-hmm. a bit of an unusual term and people might not have heard it before. But Altiorum is a sustainable li- sustainable finance library and advocacy platform, uh, which was co-founded in 2019. We launched it in 2020. And what makes it so great is that it's actually community built. So we have volunteers that uh, we, we essentially, we take the great ESG sustainable finance research out there that's already written. And then we have university students, we call them contributors, and they will summarize the research and pull out the key insights and then we have mentors who are also volunteering their time and they're experts in the industry so they could be experts in finance or a uh, sustainability issue so modern slavery or climate change and that kind of thing and they come in and work with the contributors and just oversee that publishing process and then we have members so members of the library it's a free library to use so we have those those three areas of the ecosystem Mm -hmm. and uh, so we, we, we believe that it's the first community-built sustainable finance library out there. Um, and I just want to mention that Altiorum is Latin for higher. So our mission is to lift the finance industry higher, and that's why it's called Altiorum. Oh, I love that. Okay, so so it's got it's, – it's content or information or insights that are being curated for us, really. So it's the curating all that different yeah. – okay – and so is this has this been done anywhere else in the world is this sort of a first of its kind there are other sustainable finance libraries out there but they're not quite firstly they're not really community built and right. secondly they're not as in depth with the taxonomy uh so the, we categorize we deeply categorize the research to make it really easy for users and members to find what they need right and, okay uh, as an so I mentioned that Altiorum is a um, sustainable finance and advocacy platform. Yeah. Previously, our taxonomy or our categories were around creating change, so making the case for change. Yep. And so the old taxonomy was built around, you know, if you were working in an organisation and you needed to go to your manager and say, look, I think that we should start bringing in ethical investing or sustainability, we wanted to make that super easy for people within an organisation, even if they weren't across this area, make it as easy as possible for for them to advocate for change. And so the original taxonomy was based around making the economic change, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry, economic case or the investment case, the ethical case or the business case. So depending on, you know, if you were uh, working with portfolio managers or whether you were in a company, you could make the case. But we really wanted to make it more practical. And so we've updated the new taxonomy and the new categories around things to learn right. and actions to take. Okay. So now when you go to the library, you can find areas to increase your knowledge, but also actions to take. So things like case studies, step by step, and that kind of thing. So I guess where we sit in the advice tech space mm. would be to, you know, if, if an advisor is looking to either learn, or even advocate as well. So perhaps their practice manager or uh, their licensee or something, they need to build up some supporting evidence because they really feel like this is important, then our theorem is great for that. And I think that we sit well alongside some fintechs as well. So uh, OCO Advisor and Ethos. Um, I think you've had the them sort of on more the... analytical tools, yeah, you know, the yeah. ones actually analysing the funds. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think you've had them on the podcast too before. Mm. These are really great apps which help advisors to like have the conversation with clients and then look at uh, products and then report on them. But I think the missing link that Altiorum fits there is actually helping advisors to understand the underlying issues, you know, yes. what those different ESG issues are that you're going to talk with your clients 
understanding the plastics or palm oil or, you know, the climate change, those things that clients want to go deeper into with Aotearum, if you're learning those things, you can actually feel a bit more comfortable having those conversations. Yeah. And it's, it's an interesting point, isn't it, in terms of, I mean, you said lifting the finance um, industry higher, which I really like, you know, money pointed towards or away from something has always had a powerful effect. You know, I mean, apartheid was significantly impacted by the world changing the trade, the way they traded with South Africa. So it's always been shown that that's, that's got weight um, and it actually can have impact. Of course, our own little actions can too, but the, you know, flows of money <laughs> heading different ways can make a massive difference. And I think, you know, in Australia, when we've got this massive super guarantee charge that's happening every year. I think they, the last number I looked at says we've just ticked, just, we're just under $160 billion per annum in inflows into super. Like these are not small dollars, right? They so, are not. They are right? not. So it, exactly. Re, like, like for people who this is important to, there's so, just the weight of that money being pointed either towards or away from certain things can really shift the dial on this stuff. It, it can make such a dif- big difference to what's possible, who gets attention, who doesn't, where money gets spent, all sorts of things. And so I think it is, you know, we have that opportunity, you know, and and each of our clients does. And hence, as sort of the people that are, are, are helping our clients understand those options, then all the advisors have that opportunity too, you know, to understand where that impact can be. And it's not a big, I, I've always struggled, I guess, in terms of, um, you know, ethical investing or ESG is it's such a big category. I feel like we've got to understand more just to work out where we feel impact should happen. You know, I think we've sort of got to get to that point where we can each have a a view about um, you know, where we think that we'd love that money to go because it's this huge category. Like it's just it's nuts. <laughs> yes, it, yeah, it's so true. And and I think you're you've hit the nail on the head because it isn't just clients. I mean, there's a lot of clients that are demanding this and wanting this, but advisors, us in the finance industry, us as human beings, you know, we want to see the world, you know, being sustainable for future generations. Um, And I just, it made me think of the sustainable development goals, which Mm -hmm. are a framework for the planet to redirect money towards reducing inequality and poverty and and conserving our land and water. And we, we set these goals back in 2015 to achieve targets by 2030 and we are we're halfway there in time we are not halfway there in achieving these goals and it's estimated that we need a further four uh, us four trillion dollars per year going towards these areas to actually achieve them by 2030 for australia for the world for the world okay okay but it's still some serious that's some serious dosh there uh (laughs) Some serious dice, exactly, (laughs) exactly. But that's actually, it is a big, that's my why, um, actually, Peter, because I see advisors as an integral link in that investment chain towards achieving those sustainable development goals. And so it is um, my reason for being here, actually. Right. And it's an interesting... um it, it's one of those things that's, I think, really powerful. I mean, I'm literally just going through a branding exercise, right, at the moment. And some of that is about, you know, really getting to the bottom of who you are and what you're about and, and, and try and representing that. And I think um, for many people and even for advisors potentially, then they may not have done that digging so that something that really frustrates them. Like if so, so maybe, you know, if we're both females in the advice industry. It might be, you know, diversity or, or representation or, or also your gender, all sorts of things like that, right? But they may not have done the further digging to recognize that there is a way that money can be directed to or, f- or away from things that can potentially shift that. So, you know, it's sort of connecting the grrr, rant over a red wine topic <laughs> to yes. actions we can take. Um, and some of those actions are with our money or with our investments or with our super. So I do think um, I, we probably still have a bit of a, a frame of this sort of, and I, I, Really, I'm not saying this to be offensive, but this sort of granola eating, um, hippie drippy sort of, you know, activist standing in front of the machine and the tree. And it's simply not the case anymore. We each have things that we're passionate about, deeply passionate about. We just haven't connected it to what we can do about it. Yes, you know? exactly. And, and especially with things like super, because you imagine, yes. you know, if you are a, a 
a person, an investor who is donating, for instance, $100 to, you know, a, a conservation fund or something right. like that. What the, the magnitude of change that you can create if you are directing your super towards these issues that you care yes. about is just, yes. uh, it's such, so much more impactful. It is. And, and in part, um, because it's also about, uh, you know, there's, there's people with, or groups with their feet firmly stuck in, you know, almost resisting change. And look, to be fair, you know, funds management or finance, we've all been party to you know, generally change for all sorts of things. It's, it's been quite slow um, for the industry in broad sense in financial services. That sort of, they sort of only start sort of pulling themselves out of that firm stance when they can't ignore flows. You know, they just can't ignore it, whether it's outflows, whether whatever it is, or somebody getting a whole lot of inflow suddenly, like it's that just one of those KPIs that people pay attention to, isn't it? Like it's, it's how it is. And so, you know, I think, um, to, you know, respond to that, uh, is important. And I'm with you that, that it's understand, it's better understanding the layers under that. It's, it's better understanding the why underneath that um, and what actually is going on. Uh, so a resource that isn't just the comparison, but actually helps us get better at really narrowing down, um, you know, the, the issues, like you say, the underlying issues uh, that you can sort of focus on should you choose to. You know, that's, that's quite exciting. So, okay, so we've got there must be even investors out in the public who would use the resource. There'd be all sorts of different parties, but let's talk about, you know, in a practice or a financial advisor, then is, are you picturing this as the sort of tool that even, you know, a power planner and advisor could be using as an education tool? Could they potentially even be utilizing it to almost curate content for clients as part of content management going forward? How are you imagining a practice could utilize the tool? I think, yeah, absolutely. In all of those scenarios, I mm-hmm. think like the advisor, the para planner, uh, and the client, I think it's, it's, there are resources within Arturum that will suit all of, all of them. Uh, I think that it works really well for advisors that, that do want to provide ethical investment or values based advice, even if it's just for a few clients or if they want their whole practice to be involved in this. Because yep. as I mentioned, it's really going to expand their knowledge of, of ESG and really boost the confidence that an advisor has when having these conversations with their clients. And uh, it's also because we have curated it and we summarise and we pull out the key insights and things like that, it's a really easy way for advisors to gather resources to use with clients. Right. So, you know, to either through supporting evidence, so it might be, uh, supporting evidence for the, the risk and return expectations around investing responsibly. Okay. Um, it, you might, advisors can use it to uh, help explain the impacts of divestment. Yep. And uh, and obviously just the, the different ESG issues. But yep. there's also research in the library that can help advisors understand the actual process of cr- creating a fund that has a sustainability theme or uses ESG integration. Uh, loads of information on constructing portfolios and integrating these factors into the investment process. So uh, as an advisor who wants to provide ethical investment advice or values-based advice, understanding the issues, then understanding how to look at a fund and, and see the different strategies and the different approaches mm-hmm. and then how to compare these products and then, again, to match that with the client's needs and values. Arturum has resources and research that can help through all of those different processes. And it is an, it's an interesting point. We've um, uh, I was just thinking through, you know, how you could utilise that because the – We've just embarked on a project, or sorry, we're deep in the middle of a project for rolling out a client portal now. And what we had, I'd love to say this was the plan. It wasn't the plan. We accidentally, during COVID and since we do these client webinars, and one of the topics we often cover is scams and cyber and also, and we repeatedly sort of revisit these things. And what's interesting is because we've done that and we were just doing it as this is helpful and we want to protect them type of thing, but because we've done that, then when you bring up um, gee, you know, we're going to be rolling out a client portal as one of the things that'll that'll help make us all a bit safer. Uh, then they sort of, you know, they're they're faster to lean in. And I think the opportunity exists here for if you know somebody's working towards having a really well thought out 
ethical investment approach, then you still could be drip feeding out in whether it's a new newsletter or whatever, some helpful content you guys might have that just is, hey, you know, did you want to understand about more about this issue? Did you want to understand more about, you know, and so you could just be dripping this content out such that you're really sort of prepping them, you know, you're getting them all warmed up so that when you do, br- you know, bring it to your clients and say, hey, we have this option, they've already been seeing some of that from you. Uh, and I think that can be, that can make a huge difference to how responsive they can be to those opportunities. Have you seen any practices sort of using it from that perspective of really starting the journey of educating clients on what um, ethical investing means? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because uh, like, well, Peter, am I allowed to mention the accelerator? Of course here? you are. Okay. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> because, uh, so, as, Secret. No. <laughs> I know. I know. So um, I – I educate advisors in this space through a program called the Ethical Advice Accelerator. Yeah. And as head of research for Altiorum, I get a lot of research that crosses my desk per se. And so I curate a lot of that and I bring it into the program. And so it awesome. helps advisors uh, just firstly get their head around the issues and that kind of thing. But also in the program, we, we look at ways to add it to your website, for instance. So, right. you know, uh, responsible investing in a nutshell or uh, working out your why, uh, yep. but also creating education packs for clients, you know, because if you are bringing this in, into your service, especially at the beginning, your clients, this is going to be brand new to your clients as well. So how do you, you know, curate such a, a wide body of research and, and things like that to a really easy to digest pack for your clients, I think yeah. is really, really useful as well. Yeah, it is. And I think um, we're starting to see that a lot with those, those. so it might be a, a topic that's deep into what we do like this, or even something a bit tangential, even like, you know, powers of attorney, all these other things that you may not be providing for clients, but it, it's, you know, it folds into or it crosses over to what we're doing. Having whether it's a PDF or whether it's a downloadable or it's a, you know, like some things that can just talk them through these topics can be so valuable. Um, and, and also what I like is it's tangible value. You know, when you turn it into something that's tangible, that, that you know, it's, it's a PDF of this or it's like, you know, it, it's important that we do make it easier for people to see the value um, and understand it. So I think it's smart to do that, to have that sort of pack or whatever it is to really, and just to concisely think through those, you know, what's a suite of those that we could have ready. Like you say, they could sit on the website, all sorts of places and your team will end up linking to them all the time. You know, yeah. they'll just, oh, yep, so we've got something like that. I'll just send you the link even before the meeting. You can take a look and I know that so-and-so, you know, your advisor will talk you through it when they speak to you. Like it's just great to to have those tools on hand um, rather than the advisor always just going through that from scratch every time. That's, um, like, yeah, that's so true. And I actually forgot to mention too that Altiorum, we, we pull out the key insights and the – a 500 word summary and all the different categories. But another really cool feature that we do on our theorem is we pull out really great charts and right. really great quotes. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we are an advocacy platform. If you're going to create a presentation, well, then the best thing that you can use is charts and powerful quotes. So we've pulled them already out for you. But to, uh, for an advisor, it, you know, when you're putting together an SOA or some advice documents, having uh, performance charts and, you know, responsible investing performance charts and things like that, you know, you can get that as well through through Altiorum and through the research that's there. Wow, that's a great tip, actually, because you can spend um, a lot of time down the rabbit hole of, of the, you know, Google and, and searching for all those sort of things. So to have a place you can go to first um, and just, you know, look for those types of things really will make it uh, that much quicker to be able to pull something like that together. Uh, so, you know, that's a really, really great tip. I love that idea. Is there anything, you know, from an, a, an advice practice perspective or even for the clients, something that it's something else that lives in Altiorum that you you think, oh, I can't believe more people aren't using this. Like, is there any of those elements that's like the hidden gold that people haven't quite found yet? Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> so, Let so, me list the ways. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How long have we got, Peter? Um, <laughs> uh, so when you when you first head to Altiorum, it's altiorum.org uh, if you're yep. lis- in, in listening, there's, you'll get a search page. And uh, on the search page, you can search by term. So you might, you know, look up fixed income or gender lens investing or impact investing or whatever you want to do. 
But there's also a couple of tabs there, as I mentioned, things to learn, actions to take, and also ESG issues. And we have over 70 ESG issues that you can just click through. So if, you know, your client is particularly into deforestation, then you can, you know, click through and find all the research that's been categorised as that. But my the thing that I think gets missed on this page is up the top in the header navigation is a library tab. And in the library tab, we actually have way more uh, search categories. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, so if you go up to library, you can, you can search by all the, the things to learn, actions to take ESG issues, but you can also search by sustainable development goal. So right. things like climate action, quality education, you know, if you've got yep. clients that are teachers, for instance, you know, the yep. SDG for education would be great stuff in there. Um, but you can also search by uh, sustainability sector. Mm-hmm. So uh, whether you want to do, um, these are from SASB as well. So capital markets, banking, insurance, infrastructure, coal, oil, gas, minerals, mining. So lots yep. of stuff up there. Uh, in the library, you can also click directly through to research based on asset class. So we've got fixed income, listed equities, private equity, alternative okay. infrastructure. And also in the library tab, you can search based on finance relevance. And so this would be specifically related to if you click through things like investment, impact, financing, but, and this is the ninja tip, what I really love is that there is also a category for financial advice. Okay. So go up to the library and click through to finance relevance and then through to financial advice. And here you'll find research relating to things like greenwashing, uh, climate change risk, trends in demand, the growth of ESG, those kinds of things, and investor toolkits. Look, and you, you mentioned greenwashing there, and I think it's something that um, that's really important to touch on because I think there would be advisors or you know people in the industry listening out there who feel maybe even have hesitated to go down this path because, wow, it feels like a minefield, you know, and I say that with some irony in that I know as an expression, um, given the topic we're in, but, but, um, you know, whoa, hold on, you know, and how do I know? And like, there's, there's some real hesitation because it, it feels like, yeah, you could really easily go good intentions might not result in the right outcome, but what I'm hearing and also, you know, my understanding is on any topic, whether it's this or something else, the more you've bothered to learn, the better the questions you can ask. So, you know, I think that makes a massive difference is just bothering to absorb some information means you've got not just the basics, you might ask a fund manager, but you've got the next question to ask them, you know, something that just goes a little deeper. And that's how we catch greenwashing. And I mean, in a broader category than intentional. So there's the, you know, wrapping rubbish in shiny paper version, (laughs) which is really horrendous. But I think there's also the, well, okay, it's not that it's not that it's it's purely intentional. It's that they haven't – that we don't fully understand exactly what's there and therefore what they've done some of what they've represented but maybe we're a bit misled on other parts. You know, I think there's a lot of this grey in some of this stuff in funds now. Is that your take too? Like there's this sort of middle ground that's really – it's it's just not clear. Is it exactly what we think it is? Uh, yeah, 100%. It's definitely okay. there's a grey area because also, I mean – not all greenwashing is intentional either. You know, right. this, is a, this is a really big ship that we're turning at the moment. Yeah. And, you know, th- there is a shortage of skills in this space as well. Yeah. And so the, the people that are working in these, in, it, with these fund managers, they may also have gaps in their knowledge as well. And, you know, so I think that there is definitely some legitimate greenwashing and deliberate greenwashing, but also sometimes it is, it's not intentional. Yeah. And uh, I think the best that we can do is to really just upskill and, and get across this area as much as possible so that we can really discern for ourselves. Right. And it's because the, the more questions they're asked about a particular thing, the, the better they'll get internally about it. They'll ask, they, they'll be asking those better questions. They'll be making sure it's clear in the product. You know, it's, it's, um, and we, like you said, I mean, it's a really good point actually about, you know, there's this massive shift we're moving. You know, most funds management mm, technique or assessment or analysis is based on theory that's up to a hundred years old. Like, <laughs> Like, you know, this is this is stuff that we all talk about that we all just have as given and, and it, diversification, economic theory, like all these theories, right? And that's great. And yet modern portfolio theory always cracks me up as an expression because it's, it's just not that modern, you know, in terms of no. timing. It's been around a while. 
So you've got that embedded in an industry like funds management. What we're talking about here, I mean, is it yet really 10 years? Could you call it even 10 years in terms of having, you know, mainstream funds available? It's probably not, is it? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it is longer. <laughs> it's longer right. than that, actually, because uh, I'm a member of the Ethical Advisors Co-op, which is a yep. group of advisors through Australia and New Zealand who have been practising ethical investment advice for for years and years, and some yep. of them up to 30 years. Okay. And I can tell you that when they first started, there might have been one fund that they could choose. Right. You know, they have, they've absolutely, some of them have absolutely pioneered this industry, and it's through those engagements with the fund managers, right. letting them know that, hey, I've got more clients that are interested about plastics, you know, what can right. we do here and that kind yep. of thing. And so I do think that change is created by the intersection between advisors and the product providers. Yep. And I, I don't like an us and them approach. I think no. we're all in this together and yep. we can all help each other uh, get better and, and ultimately help our clients but also help the world. So, Absolutely. but and, and you make a good point there because if, to a certain extent, and they'll probably, I'll probably get tackled by one at the next event I'm seeing out for saying this, but, but to a certain extent they're order takers. They take an order that we give them in that, well, gee, we need a fund that's like this or our clients all want this and then then those products all start popping up or the public say, hey, we want to invest it. Well, those products start popping up. It's it's rarer that there's one out of the blue that nobody ever expected. That's very unusual uh, in finance, right? Generally, it's enough noise about a particular interest, whatever that might be, and then, you know, then we might get a fund or we might get an investment tool that will reflect that. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. You're yeah, their it's, clients. It, you're their clients. Right. And you're the advocates on behalf of your clients. You absolutely. Know, so, yeah. Absolutely. And so, yes, it is um, it is an interesting, yeah, it's, it's it's that natural tension and it probably always needs to be there um, where we sort of poke and prod and, and then they come back with a solution and we go back and go, yep, 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 nope, 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 you know, <laughs> we yeah. keep on this shifting and changing. But I like the idea you know, you'll have worked with advisors through the accelerator that are already down that path. There might be others going, meh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure I'm ready yet to have Altiorum to just start their own process. This is one of those things you can do in your own time, you know, devour a bit of content, watch a video, whatever it might be, so that you can just start to get that next layer of, of understanding. You know, let's build up our 10,000 hours. <laughs> you know, we'll need to feel like we're experts. Well, no, we, we're never going to catch up to people like yourself. You're way ahead of the rest of us. But but I do think it's a great place to start. I'm curious. So you you mentioned you have contributors, you have, um, correct me if I get this wrong, mentors and then members. That's the three category. Which one is the one you need more of the most? Oh, we have a mentor shortage definitely right. at the moment. Uh, yes, um, members are growing beautifully because there's Good. so much need for this. Yep. Um, contributors, we have a lot of relationships with universities and so that really helps build our contributor community. Yep. But mentors, our industry expert, experts, of course, time poor, yeah. Uh, and that kind of thing. So, and it is volunteer based. It, it is only a couple of hours, you know, a month or, or two okay. here and there. Yep. But uh, mentors, definitely, we would we would love to have more. And financial advisors can also be mentors. Yep. Uh, because it's a great way to learn, and also you're building relationships with the next generation. You know, these right. university students that are coming through too. And so, if there was somebody that isn't. Um, quite as experienced or, or deeply done all this history and research into ethical investing but but has a passion for that maybe and isn't a financial advance, uh, advisor, could they potentially be a mentor? Like is the skill as much the curation exercise and the guiding the contributors as it is knowing all the answers? Yes, yeah, it is. I think that, I mean, you have there's two choices too because someone that's in the industry can also be a contributor. So right. they can get the piece of research and summarize it. It's not just university students, but someone yep. that wants to, to to contribute and summarize some research and grow their own learning is absolutely fine. Uh, but mentors, we have mentors from all, all different fields yep. uh, that really we just need critical thinking, right. uh, some topic knowledge, because you can choose what piece you work on. So right. uh, if you're an expert in modern slavery, well, you can stick with that, you know, but yep. if you want to um, broaden your horizons, well, then, you know, you get to choose what what, you, what piece you work on. Yep, yep, yep. And it is, um, 
it's, that's sort of where, what I was fishing for, actually, because the critical thinking part can often outweigh even the deep insight. You know, if you can look through and, and you know, curate well, like all that, that sort of thinking stuff, sometimes you can even do that to content you don't necessarily know well. You know, it's just about the way you approach it um, and yeah. the structure you bring to it for people. But that brings an interesting point that um, maybe any listeners that may themselves be professional year, uh, you know, sort of students or even have them in the office, this could be a control contributed this could be a wonderful thing to add to, you know, the requirements for their role. Um, if it's only a small amount per month, but they're still, you know, analyzing something and digging into that risk. I mean, what a wonderful thing to be teaching them and doing alongside them. Um, so I think that'd be a great thing to add to what they can sort of almost start to give back almost from day one into an industry. You know, what a wonderful lesson to teach them. Thank you, Peter, for sharing that. And and actually the feedback that we've had from our contributors has been one of the key skills they've walked away with is how to succinctly capture information. Right. Uh, which is an absolute skill that would be needed throughout, you oh. know, or, or throughout the practice. So absolutely. Yeah, really and can I tell skill. you having, um, so like, you know, with the deep dark past of mine, I studied actuarial studies. And when I had finished after a few years, I had one of my lecturers, but professors sort of reach out to me and say, Peter, would you mind um, doing some marking? for them of assignments. And I've got to say, there is absolutely a need between university and business to learn how to pull together concisely uh, information and summaries and all those sort of things. It was it was horrific um, because nobody's taught them. No. Like how, you, you can't just learn, like it doesn't, you just don't innately have that. You've got to have experienced it. There's structures you can use, there's techniques you can use, all of which you need to practice to learn, right? Um, That's and right. so, That's yeah, right. exactly. It's it's not something you, know, you, you come out of the womb knowing, oh, this is something we've all got to learn. <laughs> no, no. And it, it helps with job, you know, with job applications and yes. professional development. And that's like every con- every volunteer, whether they're contributor or mentor, has a profile on the Outerum website. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to network and engage with others, but also market yourself, really. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that's, that skill of being able to concisely sort of pull together something like that, I mean, that's really what an SOA is. You know, I mean, really. Yes. So this is all in those same skill bases. Um, so even if you've got somebody, this could even be something that somebody could start doing if they're looking to move into advice. You know, maybe they've got experience in another part of the business and they're making that transition. They might even be doing a bit of study. Like this is the sort of thing that would just be wonderful and more personal and feel more applicable. You know, lots of people need to have, yes, they can do the academics, but often they need that thing that feels more real to them to keep that excitement and enthusiasm. And I could see that for a lot of people that could, this could do the trick um, to be a contributor to this. Oh, I love that. We, you're going to be, I'm hoping you're inundated with contributor <laughs> volunteers so. so. um, and mentors. Don't forget, folk, we need more mentors. Okay. Now, let's just talk about where you see it going in the future. Are there any grand plans we should know about? Anything coming up that you so see? So grand of- plans. Oh. <laughs> World so domination. <laughs> uh, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but the thing with, uh, I mean, we, we're a registered charity as a library. So we, we've just, we're recently working on on our budget and we're working yep. out the things that we can focus our attention and our strategy on. But I know there's, a few things on the list. Uh, we would love to have, you know, on in the library a member area so people can save their favourites and things like that. Yes. Uh, we're focusing a lot more on community engagement and connection because I think that's, you know, the fact that it is so community built, built we have uh, such a such value to provide in facilitating that, that yep. connection. Uh, we're also looking at corporate mentorship programs and we're even hoping to get them CPD recognised. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so we could work with even an advice practice and have everyone doing their bit and it's CPD uh, Ooh, accredited. Nice. So that's that's our definitely a big hope. hope. Mm. Lots more webinars, learning opportunities, uh, both for volunteers and for members and, and yeah, just incorporating AI. Uh, that just, was going to be my next question. Yeah. <laughs> I had it typed in here. I'm oh like, looking goodness. forward, surely <laughs> there'd be some, probably one of those, like, what do they call them? Like my AIs, where you can just put it around your own content, you know, and just make it easier for people to interact with and, and sort of trawl through what you've got there. I could see AI being really helpful with that. We just spoke about that in the team yesterday. So... <laughs> 
Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And there's so many things coming out now that, I, that it's sort of like a skin around your own sort of little world that you can add um, and, and helps people sort of draw out uh, yes. information and, and yeah. even conversations about it and, and get them started. So, That's yeah, AI could probably um, really, really uh, step up the experience for the members, which would be wonderful. Yeah. And, and actually one, one last thing, which we've Ooh, only yes. just, we, we are just launching right now. We are creating new expert guides. And the first one is written by me and it's on yep. gender lens investing. Yep. And uh, so I mentioned that lovely header navigation menu with the library tab. There's also an insights tab. And so there you find uh, expert guides. This is the first one, but across 2024, we're hoping to really build that out. And that brings in topic areas that, uh, you know, other research that's in the library, but also external links and, and it really brings it all into the one spot. So we're really hoping that uh, is helpful to oh, all of our members. So you've not been busy at all. Like you've just been laying around, right? Not doing much. <laughs> all right. Oh, it's really impressive. And I think um, I like that there's now some stage ways that, that you know, the audience can, so our audience can sort of engage. They, at, I mean, really almost anybody listening could become a member. You know, I would encourage you to head over to Altiorum. Why wouldn't you? This is a topic, whether it's something that you're necessarily ready for, you're going to come across a human being who is. It might be a client, it might be a family member, might be a friend. This is just one of those things that is going to become a subject in all of our education going forward. Is this is this is not a, a side issue anymore, folks. This is or it's going to become core, um, and so we may as well start you know, just interacting with that content. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Ethical Advice Accelerator if the practice is ready to really dive in and start to sort of have an, an infrastructure for this, in a sense, um, within the business, then, you know, Alexander is absolutely the person to reach out to. I th- is there anything else we've missed? Oh, my goodness. I feel like we've covered a fair bit. We have covered so much, Peter. It's been such an, a, a wonderful conversation. <laughs> Not uh, at all. Yeah, I just... I think just the, the key takeaway is that it is that this is a really it's a beautifully curated knowledge bank for you. Yeah. So please use it. You know, if you go to Google, you're just going to get heaps of results of AI generated blogs and marketing yeah. articles and what have you. Whereas Altium, you know, we we really are going to expedite your learning by bringing it all into really digestible summaries for you. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Altiorum, then the website link is in the episode show notes. Along with Alexandra's LinkedIn details, you might be somebody that could contribute in another way or or maybe you're even, I don't know, a sponsor and something, anything like that, please reach out to her. Um, thank you, ma'am, so much for joining us here today, sharing how Altiorum really can help advisors, their staff get their head around these sustainability issues. And I've got to say, you've done it with real care. It's clear that this is carefully curated. This is carefully thought through. And I think we all know that information isn't carefully done anymore, you know, and so we've got to find those places where we can get quality information and insights. So I'm excited to see where it goes in the full, you know, in the future and the, the change that you and your crew can make in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Peter. Alrighty, are you a current user of the Altiorum site and membership? Um you know, I'd be really curious about the way you're using it. Are you a passionate um, investor in this topic and, and therefore really want to get all that information or are you new to it and using it in a way to educate yourself? Please head over to the Ensemble Community Platform and sort of share where you're at in your journey um, so that other advisors can understand how you've used the tools, which things you found really helpful, you know, that sort of stuff can really point people in the right direction. Um, in terms of my thoughts then, uh, you know, the first thing was I'd really take Alexandra's tip here. When you head to the website, you can, so that's altiorum.org, you know, you head up the top to uh, the library tab. And remembering this is, you know, a free, a free membership. Then when you hit library, there's a a section there, the category called finance relevance. And under that is financial advice, right? And under that is 27 results of all sorts of things, papers, whatever they might be that they feel are relevant for financial advice. So if there's 27 that have just turned up, well, that's, you know, just over 26 fortnights, you could just have a 
uh, 15-minute meeting with the advice team, para planners, whoever's interested, and assign each of them to read one of those things beforehand. And then you have a chat for 15 to 20 minutes about the content. Um, there's some really high quality stuff there. And this would be a great way just to start, you know, start learning about it, spread it out over time. And you'll find you just sort of build these these real insights into, um, into this area, into the layers of it, the complexity of it. And I think all of us could do, could do worse than doing that. The second thing is um, that Alexandra didn't mention is there is a donate um, button. Now, this is all done, as you know, this is a not-for-profit and so they're <clears throat> doing this through volunteers. Clearly, they need anything that anybody can do um, to help them have resources to, you know, update the website and, and all those sort of things. Um, there is a donate button there where you can put in, you know, one-off. Maybe you go in, you found some great content, you know, maybe you, you know, donate $20 or something like, you know, whatever um, that can contribute. Or you could do a small monthly amount. You could view this as, hey, you know, I would pay for a membership of this content. I might just put in a little small monthly amount that then could contribute. So don't forget that donate button, um, you know, when people take the time to carefully curate content for us, I think it is absolutely worth rewarding them for that effort. Now, as you know, there's only one skill that we need to become bionic advisors, and that is avid curiosity. So to help you build that habit, this week's Curiosity Corner website that I'd love you to take a look at is Waterdo. It's called. This is by the Seek Our Tech group. So that's uh, you can find it at waterdo, W A T E R D O dot seekartech.com. And their tagline is fun brings motivation and motivation boosts productivity. This is really interesting. It's quite a simple app, but what I like is it's addressing the challenge that some people have with to-do lists. Um, and that has to do with the way that our just brains work with those sort of things. And some people ticking a to-do list works really well and for others it doesn't. So what this tool lets you do is it, it lets you quickly add tasks and drag them to set dates in your calendar. Okay, fantastic, right? You can just build what is technically a to-do list. But what happens is when you're looking at what you've got to do for the day, it's not a list in a normal form. It's balloons on your screen, right? So you've got these, well, actually they're water balls, which is hence water do. So these visualization of it is these water balloons that then when you're done, you pop the water balloon, right? Which I really like. Um, and it's got all sorts of other motivation elements and gamification that has to, you know, special islands waiting for you to explore when you go th get through so many tasks and all that sort of thing. It's really sort of getting you keen to complete things so that you can pop the balloon or, or go and check out an island and all that sort of stuff, right? So what was interesting is that I, as I did more digging into this app, then a lot of the comments were really cool. So this was people saying that either they had ADHD or they have kids with ADHD and they said that this app has been a game changer for them. Life doesn't feel cluttered anymore and the gamification really suits them very well. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I love these sorts of things that are suiting a particular way that people think and it just does something that seems quite boring just magically for them. So go and check it out and see whether that maybe it does that for you. Who knows? Um, but I'd love to hear what you think. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And maybe you're ready to strategically adopt some AI tech, um, put your clients at the center of your AI journey. You want to future proof your advice practice in this sort of AI augmented world, then be sure to reach out to me to hear about my new keynote for 2024, which is AI ready advice, you know, thriving in the era of artificial intelligence. So this is about secrets to success in the age of AI that's sort of less about AI itself and more about what we can do around it or behind it or in front of it to make sure that we're using it well and smartly and in a protected way. So get ready to supercharge your tech strategy and take your advice practice to the next level. If you're curious, please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, that's P-E-I-T-A-M-D, and we can have a chat. Otherwise, I will absolutely look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.